okay. So, in the last class we were talking about RNNs which was a digression from what we actually want to do or what is part of the course. So, we will come back, we will try to come back on the track now. What we were doing? Language modeling, right. Now, language modeling through, see leave the last class because all we discussed was various architectures, uh, various RNN architectures, okay. What we were doing before that? LSTMs, but what we were doing after that? Remember we were doing some encoder decoder kind of thing, we did this in the last class, right. Huh. So, that is what we are interested in. What is encoder decoder? See this architecture has been very famous. So, remember we also talked about the image captioning problem. So, how do you solve that using RNNs? So, you basically encode the image, give that as initial input to the RNN and then it starts um, producing the caption. Okay. So, what we were essentially interested in was this thing. Now, this is our RNN block, this is your A0. Now, see since I would not be doing RNNs in detail, I okay, will do just as much ki we are able to understand attention reasonably well. This is our x1, this is pass to this is our x2. So, in general you can have y hat 1 here, but we may or may not want an output here. And you keep on doing this, this is your final. So, let us call that to be x t, this is your y hat and a t minus 1 will be coming from somewhere here, right. So, this goes as a 1 and somewhere here you must be having a capital T minus 1. Now, if this was our encoder, so this was our encoder what happens to the decoder? See RNNs were bad because, so why did not we want plain vanilla RNNs? Remember something that we did in last course on vanishing gradients, why do gradients vanish? Because as you add more layers, there is more multiplication of uh, gradients involved, right. And what happens if all of them are small? Then you will get 0. So, the gradients start vanishing, even though they should have not vanished. See, that is the whole point. The problem here is in gradient descent, what is your criteria for checking something, there is only one thing you are checking, what is it? Whether gradients have become 0, okay. And now, if gradients become 0 for some other reason, the reason being that every single partial derivative was so small that their multiplication gives me a number that is close to 0. So, if this long chain of multiplication, all of these uh, let us say most of it has number lesser than 1, then a number lesser than 1 to the power something that is going to give me close to 0. If you see something like this is happening here as well, okay. I will make separate videos for this, I would not take my classes time for this. So, what is going on here is if you see there is a long chain here and the same w coming up, okay which weight is going all the way, which so which weight is common here. Now, let us say, so I have not even talked about what is the loss function here and I do not even plan to. So, 
tell me if I am supposed to take some kind of, um, so if this is my y hat, let us say I am not considering any of this, how will you back propagate? Just very quickly, wherever you see a forward arrow, you will have a backward arrow corresponding for back propagation. Okay? And now you see here, this is a long chain and you are talking about that very same matrix, it turns out that if that number is lesser than 1, gradients will vanish, if that number is greater than 1, gradients will explode. So, one of these two things is bound to happen. This was not the case for feed forward neural networks because there were so many multiplications there. It is not necessary that all of them will be lesser than 1. Do you see what I am saying? If you talk about deep neural networks, feed forward neural networks, we had a long chain of multiplication of partial derivatives. Right. So, if it so turns out that all of them are so, I, I mean all of them are less than 1, their multiplication gives me a number close to 0, but it is not necessary. Let us say what happens if half of them are greater than 1 and half of them are lesser than 1. I may get a number which is not 0, but some something. So, gradients are not vanishing, but in this case what happens? It is the same number that gets multiplied with itself again and again. So, you get a matrix or in case of just one number, that number to the power something like t, same number to the power t. Now, that same number is either going to be less than 1, in that case what will happen? Gradients will vanish if less than 1 and if that same number is greater than 1, then gradients will explode. Okay. Equal to 1 you have to be very lucky that it was just 1. Okay? Now, it would not be 1, but anyway. So, all I am trying to say here and I have not given reasons for anything. All I am trying to say here is this is a long chain of forward computation and while doing backward computation, if this were plain vanilla RNNs, they suffer from vanishing gradients. Okay? Now, LSTMs they try to address this problem. Okay? So, they are very good at doing this. So, let me ask you this question. This is our language modeling task and the statement is this. When she tried to print her tickets, so this is again from CS 224N lecture 6, okay, 2024. So, when she tried to print her tickets, she found that the printer was out of toner. She went to the stationery store to buy more toner. It was very overpriced. After installing the toner into the printer, she finally printed her. She finally printed her. It was tickets. So, if you could not remember, right. So, what happens? So, when we try to print her ticket, we somehow should preserve this information that later I am going to use this. RNNs they simply cannot remember plain vanilla RNNs because let us say here you want tickets and the tickets was you know somewhere 20 units back. So, the gradients that were there they cannot be learned here. Okay? So, if you have long range dependencies RNNs fail miserably. So, what happens? So, in practice as they say in practice, simple RNN will only condition roughly 7 tokens back. Okay? So, if, if it were, so if this tickets was used like 7 words before, at most 7 words before, it will be able to uh, decode that else, no. But LSTMs, they take this 7 to 100 roughly. So, it is not that LSTMs do not suffer from vanishing gradients, they do, but the degree to which they suffer is very less. Okay? Why so? I will make separate videos for this. Uh, let, I, I mean I would not uh, dedicate time to this on a course on LLMs. Okay? So, this is fine. Why are almost always LSTMs used? Because they can cater to such long range dependencies that we just talked about. Okay? 
you are talking about something in last paragraph, you need that information right now, LSTMs can still do that, but RNNs cannot. So, this was, so write down this as a problem, RNNs beat LSTMs or be it um, vanilla RNNs, they both suffer from vanishing gradients and exploding gradients problem. Okay? But LSTMs have solved it to, you know, for all practical purposes, it is fine because if they can cater to, you know, 100 long range dependencies, that is still okay. After 100 words, you can recall that is okay. And it is not that there are no instances where you would not be using a dependency, you know, earlier than 100 words, of course, you will have, but rare cases. So, this is okay. For all practical purposes, LSTMs as far as long range dependencies were concerned is okay. Right. Now, what was not okay is we will discuss today. So, now tell me this is which part? Encoder. What is T here? Capital T. So, capital T is my sequence length, whatever my sentence was. Okay. Now, let us put this T x, why T x? Because input, so see we are talking about translation. So, capital T need not be same for the decoder units here. Okay. So, let us try to, so Now, so which which element is this one? This guy. What should I what should I write here? A T. So this is A T X. What should be here? Here, start symbol. So, see, you need to remember that there is a, there have to be two special symbols: start and end, whatever you call it, right? Different courses address them differently, but you definitely need these two symbols. So now, what is the job of this decoder now? y hat 1, now this will be what will be fed here, whatever is here. So, this is y hat 1. Now, what is wrong with this? What is good with this first of all? Good is that you are not supposed to look for what should I input here. You already have that from the last instance and that is what you are doing. You are doing language generation. So, this is fine. What might go wrong here? So, what happens if y hat 1 is super wrong? Then garbage in, garbage out because this will be garbage in what do you expect here? Garbage. Something garbage. So, basically from the beginning itself, you are outputting garbage. How do we solve this? I mean, I am talking about train, training time. How do you solve this? Right. So, what you do is something called teacher forcing, which is let us say it outputs y hat 1. And the in your corpus actual word was something else. So, you penalize this, write this down, but just, just this one line, what is teacher forcing? So, you output y hat 1, you compare this to back propagate. So, you use this y hat 1 to back propagate. But what you feed here is actual 
actual word in the corpus. Okay. When do you need to do teacher forcing? At which stage of your training? Initially, right? Because see, initially you have uh, initialized everything randomly. So, if you have initialized your weights randomly, then your these things will be mostly randomly generated. But after a threshold training, what you can do is you can stop teacher forcing and enter what you output here. Make sense? I am compressing a lot of information in you know. So, you keep on doing this. Now, you generate what will be this last thing? What are the things here? What will be here? Y T Y minus 1. <laughs> so, this is fine and then you have something here which we do not really care about. So, this is the famous encoder decoder uh, translation architecture and not just for translation if you replace. So, you can replace this thing by anything now. If you replace this ATX with representation of an image then it is going to give what happens? You can train it using, I mean you can train it for caption generation. Okay? If there is something like, so maybe video, you, so basically this vector, what is it encoding? This vector is basically encoding your input to the decoder okay? and can be anything. Now, my question is, so very celebrated architecture, very famous, it gave you know a super increase over what was the state of the art until 2014. So, this was introduced in 2014 and it worked marvelously, but we do not stop. So, what are problems with this? What are problems with this architecture? So, in general, I no, teacher forcing is fine. So, teacher forcing, I, I have just let you know what is teacher forcing, that is it. Now, um, so what were the problem of plain RNNs? They suffer from vanishing and exploding gradient. So, that is one thing that you should know. Okay. Another thing. Uh, What else? Ah, what are the two problems here? Sorry? No, see this you are just encoding. I do not see what is the question? Yes, you need to. Why? Because see what you are generating here depends on this, right? So, you do not want this guy to be learned based on bad weights learned here. So, you need to back propagate all the way until there. More questions?
Okay. So now, what are problems with this? I have drawn this one in red. So can you infer? What are problems with this? You do not have to think out of box. The very first thing that you will think is the correct thing. Exactly. Right. Now, this thing can be you know 20 sentences long, 30 sentences long. So, I am talking about just sentence by sentence. Okay. Now, if you are translating paragraph by paragraph, this becomes even a bigger problem. So, sentence by sentence, this sentence can be let us say pretty long. This one vector right, has the burden of representing the whole sentence. So, this is one issue. What else? This is something very specific to sequence to sequence models like RNNs, be it RNN, be it LSTM. So, the, the, the next problem that we are going to talk about, all these RNNs, be it GRU, LSTM and there are you know tens of variants of LSTMs and GRUs, let us call them LSTMs. RNNs. So, they all suffer from this, all sequence to sequence models suffers from this. What is it? Huh? Right, which one? See, what do you mean by sequence to sequence? Exactly, right. So, can I compute A2? So, let me explicitly write here A2. So, can I compute A2 without computing A1? It does not matter how much compute power do I have. I might be having a lot of compute power, but I have to wait for A1 to finish before I start processing for A2. And similarly for so, I have to wait for A t minus 1 until I compute for A t for all t's, right. So, this is inherently sequential and is pretty slow. So, these are the two problems that people addressed in their um, next paper that we are going to talk about later, but first we will talk about something called attention. Okay. So, these two problems we are going to address maybe not today, not tomorrow, sometimes in the class after that. But right now we are issuing two problems here. One, this vector is overburdened. It is supposed to capture the meaning of full sentence, but RNNs do suffer from vanishing gradients. So, this vector might not be a perfect one. Second, computation in RNNs is inherently sequential. So, you have to wait. So, to process the further words, you have to wait for all computations to be over before the timestamp. Okay. These two problems we are listing now. How do we solve this? So, right now we just solve. Uh, so, we try to improve vanishing gradient problems here now, vanishing gradient solutions here now. What people are doing is So, let us, so what is this part? Let me write somewhere here this is. So, this whole thing is okay. How do we solve this problem now? Which problem? One, something that improves our uh, long range dependencies thing. Another one, dependence on just this. See, I have said this many times deep learning architectures are all about your imagination. Imagination and then very hard work to program, evaluate and show that this imagination actually works. Yes. So,
राइट सो इफ यू अपडेट दिस दिस वॉज डिपेंडेंट ऑन सो यू शुड अपडेट दैट टू these are not weights this is my vector ha huh. right wo 80 minus 1 to main bhul jaunga sare yes but no so i don't want to go into this i i'll make separate videos for that okay um back propagation of rnns is an involved topic so i'll do that separately hmm? okay so there is something called attention now so let me see if i can change this one don't want to draw this again hmm so let me just do this so direct example from their slides okay now what will be generated here he hit he what will be generated here now so this is a french sentence saying ila montate okay so i mean you think this one small sentence is encoding so much so they have just one word for hit me with a pie nahi hit with a pie because me is this okay now so you are encoding everything here in this one vector same as before i have just now uh, written two sentences so this is french this is english translation of it now 
this one vector is encoding everything. Okay. Now, what attention says is so what attention does is the following. When you want to output here, what are the things you depend on right now? So, now we are talking about attention. Okay. So, you have to pay attention because this is part of all modern architecture these days now. I should have not used this space. You write it down and I will delete. Huh. Right now you are depending on just one vector. Okay. What attention says is you basically do a. Uh, so, right now are you using anything from here? No. Okay. So, this one, this one and we are actually not this one, okay. So, hidden state of here and hidden state of there you take dot product. चार जी बी रैम रखी है यार इसकी ओके लेट एस कम बैक अगेन सी अगेन एज आई सेट डीप लर्निंग आर्किटेक्चर आर ऑल अबाउट इमेजिनेशन सो नाउ समबडी कंसेप्ट एंड सेज किसी यू आर डिपेंडिंग टू मच ऑन दिस वैक्टर रादर वट यू आर सपोज टू डू इज सो वट दे प्रपोज इज हिडन पार्ट फ्रॉम हियर वट इज दिडन एलिमेंट फ्रॉम हियर what is that notation that we are using at okay so let us call all these guys h now and let us call all these guys s now okay so let us call this as h1 h2 h3 and h4 which is also consistent with the notation that they are using and this is S1, S2 and all the way. See, right now output here depends on this. So, S1 depends on H4 and the output here depends on S1 and so on. What we are saying right now is the vector here before taking output. So, you have not taken this output yet because you are doing all this math to decide what will be the output. So, whatever was the hidden unit here, stop there, take hidden unit of the first element, take a dot product, you will get a number, dot product means you will get a number. So, basically uh, what is this exactly? H1 transpose with S1. This is going to give me a number. Next, what do we do? What do we do next? H2 dot S2 or S1. So, you do this one as well. Okay. 
dot product. Now, what is this? You write down. I do not have that much space. Okay, let me try. What is this? H 1 transpose, sorry, H So, this is H 2 transpose dot with S 1. Okay. What will be next thing? H 3. Um, which color now? Let us say this one. Okay. What else? Which color is left? Blue? This, I mean. I do not think this blue is visible, blue is not visible right. So, I mean ok, good that this sentence was just 4 words. So, this is dot product of H 4 with S 1. So, what do you see here? Where are the where are we going? See earlier you were depending on just this H4. Now somehow you are trying to consult everyone. What exact math? We will come to that, but now so tell me, will this architecture suffer from vanishing gradients as much? Why not? Huh? Right. Okay. So, what do I do with this now? I have got how many dot products? How many numbers have I got? Four numbers or basically Tx. In general, I have got Tx numbers now. What do I do with that? Right. So, this is these things are called my attention scores. Okay. Now, what are we trying to do here? Tell me. You should be able to answer this one. Have you generated output? Not yet. Before generating output at the uh, activation at the um, hidden layer, right? what you are doing is you are taking dot product with the activation of or hidden um, states of all these guys. You get some numbers, you get a vector, what do I do with this? So, in a way are you asking everyone? So, before you give output here, you are asking everyone how much should I depend on? So, you are essentially asking this question, how much should I depend on H1? How much should I depend on H2? How much should I depend on H3 and so on? So, how do we capture this? Dot product is done, you have numbers here. Now, what do I do? See, how will you cap? So, how will you say you should depend this much on this, this much on this? So, this is he, he is coming from here. So, where should we depend? 
how do we show our dependency that while outputting here you should depend on L? Weightage should be more to this. How do we do that? Huh? Angle. angle between which vectors? See angles you have computed. I mean you are not necessarily we are not interested in um, angles as such because we are computing the whole dot product. Okay. So, what do I do after having these numbers? Will they sum to 1? Will they sum to 1? Yes? Yes or no? Will they sum to 1? Of course not. Okay. So, how do you do how do you make them sum to 1? By now you should be pro at this, yes. And how do you do that? Softmax. Okay. So, you have a vector here, softmax. So, you have these numbers here, uh, white, red, and then this was pink or purple. And then which color is this? Blue. Cyan kind of thing, right? Hmm. Anyway, so you have these. So you have these numbers here. Okay. Uh, so I hope it will let me do just once. If I make a concentrated dot, it has a problem. So, would not do that now. Okay. So, you have these 4 numbers here, they may not sum to 1, you take softmax. Okay. Now, once you have softmax, what will happen? It will give you a probability distribution. Okay. So, that means these whatever the output of softmax is that will necessarily sum to 1 and every number will be between 0 to 1 and that we kind of try to interpret as probability of something. So, just one more time. See it works. Okay. Now, we just go to white. So, this one you take attention, uh, take what? softmax. This is going to give me a probability distribution now. So, let us say, so I am not going to change colors now. Let us say this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay. So, y, y axis is your probability and these are the different words that you have. So, what does it mean probability or weightage? So, while computing, so you have not computed this he yet, you have not computed for he yet. What you are doing at the hidden stage levels, you do all this computation. Uh, before training, do you think this is supposed to stress on ill? See, why are you getting this kind of a graph? Why is softmax giving you this? I mean highest weightage on L which is right one, but why? So, this I had to draw something, so I draw this, okay. but in general it could have been here. So, you would stress more on M. But while generating he, so if you stress more on m here, what you will generate first here? Me. Me. And what will be wrong with that? Your loss will be higher 
and you will have to back propagate. So, eventually if your system is working fine, the most weightage will come to first one ill. So, during a course I mean during this training time weightage will be put on the correct word on which you should depend on. So, uh, for example, while giving this input while giving in hit here you should depend on what? Enthate. Okay. While outputting pi you should depend on while outputting this me here the highest bar should be for m, m okay, and so on. You get the idea? What is the idea? Instead of depending just on this vector, what are we doing now? You are asking kind of, a, I am using this word asking again and again, we will uh, make it more concrete when we talk about transformers. So, you are asking everyone whom should I depend on? You are taking this particular kind of vote, it says you should depend more on ill. So, basically it now helps you generate this word he with more confidence. So, he will be generated. I mean uh, if you do the same thing with RNN, if you do the same thing with uh, attention, this one is supposed to give you better results. So, is this idea of attention clear? Right? So, we go next or you have any questions here? Now, okay, no, I have any, I have questions here. So, what do I do here? Achai, but, uh, tell me one more thing. Are we still suffering from that old problem which is I must compute H1 before I compute H2 and so on? Have I solved that problem? No. Have I solved this problem of what was the other problem? This one, depending on just this one, up to at, I mean at least better than just depending on this one, you depend on all H1, H2, H3, H4. So, that problem we have kind of solved. So, this one happens here, you take dot product here. Now, what happens when you were generating here? So, just give me equations for S2 now. S2 dot. So, H1 transpose S2. So, H1 dot product with S2, H2 dot product with S2, H3 dot product with S2, H4 dot product with S2. You will get a different vector now and that different vector will if, when you convert it to softmax that will give you a different distribution. So, hit <coughs> this time the bar will be highest for enthalpy. So, what will be the next time? H1 transpose dot S3 and so on you keep on doing this until you generate end of the sentence. Okay. So, now we have talked about this one. How do we use these weightage things now? So, you have this one. Okay. <clears throat> these are all scalars. So, what you need here is you need a vector here. Is it enough for today? Or let us finish this part just. Okay. So, all these are scalars. How do I basically reconcile this math? These are H1, H2, S3, H4. I get this distribution, but finally I must work with vectors. So, what is it that I should work with? 
there is something called attention output. So, this attention output, so this attention output So, this gives me what is attention output? What should this vector be? What will be the size of it? And we are assuming that for all hidden states, our size is 100, same to V, right. So, what will be the size of this attention output? Four cross one. Why four cross one? So, but what do I do with this size four cross one? No. So, so this vector is four cross one. What do I do with this now? I mean, the next logical step, and I believe you can think. Right. So, how do you represent this thing? See, while generating he here, so I have not generated y hat yet. Okay. So, while generating y hat, what should I depend on all these? How should I depend on all these? This number times h1, this number times h2, this number times h3, this number times h4. What are the sizes of h1, h2, h3, h4 in all our examples? It is 100 cross 1. Okay. So, this attention output is your 100 cross 1. So, let us say if this number is alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4, let me just ensure they are using this only. Yes, so these are alpha 1, alpha 2, yes. So, you get this attention output or not? If you do not get this, you do not go. Nain, what is this? They go, I need to finish it. A, a. My, my end has not yet come. So, it is about to come. Yes. Is, is this output clear with everyone? Yes, sir. This one is clear with everyone. So, the corresponding numbers here you multiply with their hidden states. Okay. So, this is a scalar, multi scalar vector multiplication. So, if this is 100 cross 1, this number multiplied with this one will give you 100 cross 1 vector only. Okay. This guy much smaller number compared to alpha 1 will get multiplied with this, this one will get multiplied with this, this one will get multiplied with this. Add them. So, this whole vector that is coming is called attention output right? and it is having weightage from which guy the maximum h 1. So, now this vector is much more composed than this one alone and it gives more weightage to h 1. You use this vector, so call this vector as a t and now you use a t and s t this guy. So, a, a 1, okay, this is a 1 actually. because this is for the first one. So, you now concatenate a 1, s 1 and now compute y hat, I am done. Yes. No. So, what you said is right. We are not telling the weightage of h 1 is more or less. What we are saying weightage of h 1 is this. It turns out to be high in this case, 
but it will turn out to be lower in when you are generating this one. So, summation alpha i is 1, you got these numbers from these vectors. So, these numbers are dot product of these guys, you got these numbers. Now, these numbers they do not you know they necessarily do not represent a probability distribution. You take softmax, you get these numbers, hmm? you multiply these numbers, you get this vector. You use A t, A 1 and S 1 to compute he. You do not add them, you concatenate them. So, something like this. So, this is your A t, A 1, this is your S t. So, this becomes now 200 cross 1 okay. and now you compute y hat from this vector. Hmm? 80. So, let me write 80 as well. 80 is nothing but summation i hundred cross four y. Right. Right. Exactly. That thing. Huh. See what he is saying is this the one that I have called scalar multiplication alpha 1 h 1 alpha 2 h 2 this is a 4 cross 1 thing. Right. Another one is all these guys are 100 cross 1. So, you can still vectorize this multiplication itself. I think we will start from here in the next class. Okay. Hmm? A t ki dimensions wohi honge jo h t ke hain. A t ki dimensions wohi honge jo s t ke hain. They do not change because see isko iske saath dot product lene ke liye. So, so, to be able to take dot product of this guy with this guy, they both should be of same dimensions. Now, since A t is nothing, but it is a linear combination of h 1, h 2, h 3, h 4, it must be of the same dimension as h.